Hello, how are you? And welcome again to my health week with Stephanie Ayeta. Stephanie Ayeta is my name. And on this channel, we do great conversations. We engage different guests. We have patients, we have survivors, and we also have experts coming on to share their experiences and their knowledge on illnesses that are a burden to us. These are the chronic illnesses especially. And it is with a hope to give, it is a hope that we will inspire someone out there, will encourage someone out there, and will keep you informed on the different diseases that are there, how to manage them, how to treat them, and everything in between. So for today's interview, or today's conversation rather, I'm joined by one beautiful lady <laughs> yes she is and Thank this you. is um oncology nurse uh, rose wenjiro Karibusana. thank you so much stephanie yes it's a pleasure yeah, to have so. you so yeah. tell us um you know who's an oncology nurse for someone who's just hearing oncology for the first time uh oncology oncology is a big name it's like that big name yeah. just like what it caters for mm -hmm. so basically oncology is all about cancer and I think whenever I say about cancer, everybody shrinks True. and you see the dips in their hearts. So I can also see your facial expression like a wah. <laughs> yeah, but that's all about it. It's all about the prevention, the screening, the treatment, the palliative care that comes in end of life for our cancer patients. That is all about oncology. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. What inspired you before even get to the all the information that's out there? But what inspired you to be an oncology nurse, particularly? Um, I don't think I have such like a definite inspiration. But having worked in a hospital system, mm -hmm. I work in Maragua, sub county hospital. It's in Moranga, and for the longest time, I've been working with the reproductive health unit. And it's an excitement, it gives me the thrill working with reproductive health. Eh? Mm -hmm. But along the way, I would encounter clients who come and you screen them just on a routine base and you're like, oh, this looks like survival cancer. And I'll be like, what else do I do for the patients? Mm -hmm. So I was like, I think I need to have more information on this so that if I get to this point where I screen a patient like on a routine base, I guess the suspicious masses, lesions, I'll be able to guide the patient through the, the treatments, through the diagnosis, mm -hmm. and whatever else that comes with, with the whole bag baggage of cancer. Okay. So I think that was an inspiration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. So it yeah. came from your uh, background in the reproductive yeah. care. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, let's talk about cancer now. What, what causes cancer? This big word that we usually hear and it scares us. Is there a uh, triggers, you know, things that we're supposed to avoid so that we don't have cancer? Because mm -hmm. I've heard of people, I've known people who have been very healthy, keeping mm -hmm. a healthy lifestyle, mm -hmm. yet mm -hmm. they get cancer. Cancer. What is cancer? Maybe we should actually start there. Mm -hmm. What is cancer? Cancer is just this one disease that is that will develop from maybe nowhere. Just like you said, you have people who have been healthy, doing all the norms that are laid and pop, they're diagnosed with cancer. So cancer basically is a, is a disease that, that, that is caused by abnormal accumulation of cells. So cells that are not, cells that have some defects and then they grow and they become this one big mass or this one big lesion and the diagnosis ends up to be cancer. So mm -hmm. according to the definition of maybe World Health Organization, it's just the abnormal growth of cells. Yeah, yeah so I don't think there's a definite cause for cancer mm -hmm. and maybe it will come as research is ongoing, but there are other things that are related to. Some may be genetic, we call them carcinogenic factors. Mm -hmm. Some may be genetic, others may be external factors, meaning like our lifestyle, like you said, whatever we consume. Mostly we, we, we relate things like alcohol, smoking, radiation, the ultraviolet rays, all those are factors that can contribute they are not definite mm -hmm. and also there are some infections like for cervical cancer yeah. 
we have infections with human papilloma virus, which is a definite cause for cervical yeah. cancer. So we cannot really come up with something that is definite, say like this is what it really is Yeah, it's a range. It's a range of carcinogenic activities that cause cancer. What are the main types of cancers that are there? Cancer for one mm -hmm. can affect each and every other part of the body. They only see maybe your nails and the hair because they're dead cells. Yeah. So yeah. every other part of the body. We have two main categories of cancer. We have the what we call solid tumors and we have hematological tumors. Solid tumors are like the brain cancers, the lung cancers, and so on and so forth. Eh? Mm -hmm. For the hematological cancers, mostly they're the leukemias. Yeah, the different types of leukemias, mm -hmm. and maybe the lymphoids, the mm -hmm. lymph nodes and all that. So basically, the categories. And in terms of ranking, they are the cancers that are more dominant than others. According to Globacan, lung cancer takes the global lead of all cancers, actually. It's the top. Okay. Yeah, lung cancer is the top. Followed by other cancers, I won't mention them in a definite lineup, like from top to bottom, but lung cancer leads. Mm. There is the breast cancer, there is cervical cancer, there is prostate cancer, there is colorectal cancer. I think the five of them take the five, the first five. Mm. In Kenya, you can get esophageal cancer that affects the esophagus. esophagus. Yes. Uh -huh. So those are the main, but each and every other body part can get can cancer. Get cancer. You can get cancer of the tongue. Cancer of the of the jaws, name oh, it. Just tell me. Many. Tell me which part of the body, and I'll tell you which cancer that comes with it. All right. So, how does someone know, um, you know, that this is a symptom of cancer? Does cancer come with symptoms, and uh, you know, what do you need to look out for just for you to be on on that high alert? I think that is the that is one of the disadvantages of cancer. Because it comes with so many other symptoms that will be given different diagnoses before anybody thinks like, oh, this could be cancer. Uh, for example, like we just take like gastric cancer mm. or st stomach cancer. Okay. By the time the clinician makes a point to diagnose, well, this may be cancer, you'll have presented to the facility with hyperacidity. And you'll be telling me, you know, I went to this bash and we took a lot of lighter like, that is high risk spirit and like, a lot of spiced food. That yeah. is why I'm having the gastric <laughs> irritation. And, you know, I'll be like, oh, that is it. Take this. Give I some give you some, something to stabilize that. And then the next time you come and you'll come with another excuse. So by the time you're like, oh, this is like, mm -hmm. this could be something else. Eh? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's already advanced. And that is why you find like most of the cancers... We get them at an advanced stage yeah. because they mimic many other diseases. For example, lung cancer. It's cold. Everybody is having a flu. Everybody is coughing around. Mm -hmm. So I'll come to the facility and I'm like, Rose, oh, I'm having this cough. And I'm like, yes, I'm antibiotics and all that. Cough the syrup. cough, yeah, cough syrup. And the cough will subside. And the next time it comes, you'll be like, oh, the cough was persisted for two weeks. Oh, it could be TB. Mm -hmm. So we start the... TV so by the treatment. time we are thinking that it could be lung cancer, it is already advanced. Mm -hmm. So there is no definite signs and symptoms. That is why we are calling upon the, the medical personnel to be a bit more vigilant when they are doing their diagnosis. Let it not be like, let cancer also come among your first, the very first diagnosis that you make. Mm -hmm. Anything you, you see, don't leave in any loophole at any one point. Yeah. It should be at the back of your mind running like, it could be cancer after all. It could be pneumonia, but still it could be cancer. It could be, cancer. It could be peptic ulcer, but still it could be gastric cancer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tell us about the different stages of diagnosis for cancer, because sometimes you hear someone who's diagnosed with stage one, stage mm -hmm. two, stage mm -hmm. three, stage mm -hmm. four, and what does these stages mean? Okay, <clears throat> basically the stages are the, mm -hmm. will I say the disease progress? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And actually, you have the precancerous stage, whereby you have the cells that are not active. And then we have stage one, which means that mostly the cancer is confined within a certain region. 
it has not spread to any other any other part so if it is if it is like for example the breast cancer it is just confined to the breast and it's maybe the size is smaller the, the lump is smaller or it's a lesion the lesion is small in size it's confined to that particular organ okay so you go to stage two stage two mostly we can start talking about a larger size and starting to take more space Mm -hmm. Like the lesion is, the lump is becoming big, so it's uh, maybe it, it may be infiltrating, infiltrating to other organs that are that surrounding. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then you go to stage three, it has already maybe moved from the breast to the lymph nodes, mm -hmm. so there is uh, inclusion of another organ. And then you go to stage four, it has basically gone to many other organs Different. that is ba basically the staging mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and so it is easier to treat it when it's still in the early stages oh, right yes yeah, actually the pre cancer stage and the first stage it is very actually it is curable mm -hmm. yeah all right is it curable when you talk about when people someone is in stage four for any type of cancer what are the chances oh stage four mm -hmm. I wouldn't give much hope about cure. I think the management for a stage four patient would be more palliative, meaning like the cancer is spread to different parts of the body, maybe from the breast to the to the lungs to the spinal cord. So there's no there's no definite cure for it. The only thing would be be palliation. You do palliative care whereby you. You try to alleviate the pain, the symptoms that are that are accompanied by the disease, and maybe the symptoms that are accompanied by the the treatment modalities. Mm -hmm. But for stage one, stage one, we've said the lump is a bit smaller, the lesion is a bit smaller, it's confined to one place. Mm -hmm. So we are more particularly, we know what we want. It's like definitely we know this is where we are going, this and is this is what we are going for. Mm -hmm. So we can be able to extract it from that place, and maybe. Uh, prevent it from spreading to other places. Okay. So for stage one and maybe part of stage two, we can talk of curative as, mod as aim or the goal. Stage three, stage four, palliative. Palliative. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think that's fair enough. What about um, the? I was told the last interview we had on cancer. We were talking to um, to a, a survivor of cervical mm. cancer. Mm -hmm. And she, she said, she mentioned something that uh, cervical cancer, prostate cancer, and the other one I'm forgetting, col colorectal cancer. Yes, yeah. that one. Um, those are some of the mostly stigmatized type of cancers. Mm -hmm. So why, why is this the case? Mm -hmm. Generally, cancer comes with a lot of stigma. It doesn't matter what it is. When somebody is diagnosed with cancer, everybody will be talking behind your back. Mm -hmm. So the stigma is so high, just to put it across. But when you talk about cervical cancer, breast cancer, not no, cervical cancer, colorectal cancer, and prostate cancer, yeah, all that have one thing in common: uh, reproductive system, and mm -hmm. maybe the the modalities of transmission. Mm -hmm. When we talk about the privacy of our bodies, mm -hmm. when you talk about reproductive system, it's something that you don't want to go shouting about. Yeah. It's very true. Mm -hmm. You don't want to go like telling everybody, oh, I'm having some discharge. Oh, I'm not able to perform sexually. Yeah. Oh, my, 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 I don't want to use the crude words. <laughs> <laughs> To me. I don't want to use the crude words, but yeah, I'm mm -hmm. having some smell that is coming from my anal region. Okay. I'm having some discharge. Everybody will be like, eh, tell, mm -hmm. tell me that you're having some discharge in your cervical region or your private parts. I'll be like, hey, Ayeta, what type of a lifestyle are you living? Uh -huh. So people judge uh, you from that. And that is where the stigma comes in from. Mm. Actually, for colorectal cancer, most of the young generation are coming up with colorectal cancer. These are young people. These are young people. Mm -hmm. And basically, it's because of the, the modalities of transmission. 
colorectal cancer is more sexual yeah mm -hmm. so when we go about talking about the gbt the gayism and all mm -hmm. that yeah so, so it comes it increases the risk of getting colorectal oh, yes, cancer yes 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 okay. i'd say one of the one of the causative or the one of the yeah, of the causative features of colorectal cancer is hpv human papilloma virus mm. which is also related to actually it's the only infection that causes cervical cancer mm -hmm. and cervical cancer is more sexually transmitted at a very high percentage though you can get the hpv from many other surface areas but mostly it is sexual, sexual trans yeah, transmission sexually transmitted okay talk about prostate cancer mm -hmm. who wants to come and tell us that already they're not they're having erectile dysfunction that is because of the treatment Be no because of the disease mm -hmm. yeah who will want to come to tell us that you know what i'm not able to go pee it's painful mm. i'm having discharge in my penile you see that is where the stigma comes in okay yeah so that's why they should you know mm -hmm. at least yeah. viewed as some of the stigma yeah, mostly stigmatized. stigmatized yeah so what are the the, the treatment let's start with the treatment mm -hmm. and then we go to the management of cancer the general one or maybe mm -hmm. even you can highlight for some of the common ones i think we can join the treatment and the management is <coughs> as one well, no? okay so basically treatment we take two main goals either palliative or curative so whatever else we are talking about treatment in cancer mm. our aim is either to cure or to give palliative care Okay. So, and for all, for almost all the cancers, they take a long one, the similar parts of, of treatment, which we have surgery, uh, we have chemotherapy, we have radiation therapy, we have targeted therapy, we have biotherapy, we have transplant. So it basically depends at what stage of life or at what stage of a disease are you in mm -hmm. and what is our aim when you're giving you the management. And the management, and we've said that our aim is, is basically de de determined by the staging. Mm -hmm. So if you're stage one and stage two, we'll be looking more so at curative. curative. So if you're doing surgery, our aim still is on curative part of it. If it's chemotherapy, our aim is curative. When you talk about surgery, Surgery mm -hmm. is when we, we, we want to, to remove that particular lump or mass or tumor. So that's why, uh, you know, for most cases of breast cancer, when it's yeah. uh, identified early, then mm -hmm. uh, we usually have mastectomy. Uh, mastectomy. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Okay. So we want to remove the tumor. And then we can, on top of surgery, we can either do radiation, meaning that any other cells that have been left out when you are doing the surgery, will be destroyed by the radiation. Mm -hmm. We can decide also to do chemotherapy. Is, uh, okay, we call them as adjuvants or you know, adjuvants or whatever it is. Yeah? So we can decide to, to give surgery, then we, we combine with chemotherapy. So meaning that we've, ex we've extracted the tumor, <coughs> excuse, we've extracted the tumor, but we don't want to leave any chances that there might be one cell that we didn't get. Okay. So we are trying to hit it with the, with the chemotherapy. The same for, like for leukemias, we do transplants, whereby we go and there's blood exchange just to put it in layman's. Yeah. So like if it is, it is, we, it is, we are, we are trying to, to we transplant where, where the, the blood, the, the blood, the, 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 where the blood is made. Let me just use that. Yeah? Okay. So we change. Mine is not cancerous, yours is cancerous, so we just exchange yes. do an exchange yeah. Ah, yeah so you exchange or you remove uh, you, the cancerous it, one as you it is it you there. cannot be able to remove you're trying to to change to implant to give you new cells that are not cancerous mm -hmm. as we take out the the cancerous cells so the cancerous one is taken yes and then the blood goes back you you know you get your blood back no no so you do somebody donates it's a transplant ah. that is why you hear people going to india for mm -hmm. transplants Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically that. Okay, but I've yeah. never had, you know, with the blood, I've never really understood how Yeah, yeah, yeah. What happens, yeah? Mm -hmm. we have something we call stem cells. Mm -hmm. Stem cells is where the blood, the, the red blood cells, the platelets, the hot, 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 it's basically in the bone marrow. Mm -hmm. So this is where all the, the cells are, are made. Yeah? Okay. So 
those cells are already the 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 cells are already destroyed all the cells of the the cancer the cancer cells in it eh? so even if they make new cells still the cells will become cancerous so yeah. you need so we to transplant the we bone need marrow. to transplant the bone marrow ah. so that you can get something that is not having the cells the abnormal cells okay what's the difference between radiotherapy and chemotherapy okay chemotherapy is systemic drugs drugs that either we do infusions or you swallow mm -hmm. so ni kama two tablets yeah. yeah but they're very toxic it's just like the way you're given you go to the hospital and you get an intravenous drug for for your pneumonia mm -hmm. or something like that yeah? so basically chemotherapy is systemic like you swallow so it is spreads to the whole body radiotherapy is not systemic it is first it's external it's it's a radiation mm -hmm. yeah it's a radiation and we we target that particular region mm -hmm. so we spare the other parts of the body mm -hmm. if it is the blessed our, our our main target will be the the chest region yeah and actually like if you go to a place like here you we have a new machine we have a cyber knife which is more specific the hot what we have in KNH is or maybe in most of the facilities will give radiation to the whole chest region for the breast eh? mm -hmm. you're not able to really control uh, you get it yeah, eh? like, mm. but we have a new machine in K, in KU where we are trying to really really target the specific. the specific region mm -hmm. that was affected yeah so that is basically the difference between chemo and, and radi radiotherapy yeah. but they are both used for the same purpose curative palliative okay yeah. let me ask for a specific type of cancer for prostate cancer mm -hmm. there are some who go for chemotherapy mm -hmm. and all that mm -hmm. but there are some are on a particular med uh, medication mm -hmm. and um, an injection called mm -hmm. Zoladex mm -hmm. and that goes on for some time mm -hmm. so what kind of treatment is that so for we've said we've, we've got different types of treatment yeah? mm -hmm. and you said about about we talked about biotherapy there is immunotherapy mm -hmm. there is actually even the hormonal therapy okay. so Zoladex is among the others that is not chemotherapy uh -huh. so it just assists in <clears throat> it just assists in your in your system in the in it helps that the the, the prostate does not does not enlarge mm -hmm. yeah it's it's just one type of a modality okay yeah you go for like breast cancer we have tamoxifen yeah mm -hmm. yeah so this uh, the other type of treatments the that that's the main yeah, types, of types of treatments according yeah. to one's particular condition yes, yes, the yes. level that they're in yes, yes. what about now the management uh, of a patient who has cancer now for most diseases for other diseases uh, even chronic diseases like let's say kidney failure one would be told do not eat this do not do this do not you know there are mm -hmm. some lifestyle changes with mm -hmm. diabetes of course there's some lifestyle changes mm -hmm. what about cancer uh -huh. the manage the management of cancer is a bit complex yeah i'm also when we initiate treatment uh, like for when a patient is going through chemotherapy yeah most of the people say like oh when i got my chemotherapy i became even worse mm -hmm. i deteriorated i don't know if you've had such yes, stories yes yeah? yes so we are a bit more specific on on manage on whatever type of management the patient is eh? mm -hmm. is on so we advise on nutrition general nutrition mm -hmm. like we should have a, we should endorse a general nutritious diet mm -hmm. and like for chemotherapy it really affects the bone marrow because chemotherapy does not differentiate between the cancer cells and the the non-cancerous the non cancerous cells mm -hmm. so it destroys basically all the cells and we've said it's systemic. That is why we have alopecia. Somebody is being treated for, for gastric cancer and nyule mm imeanguka. -hmm. Because it's systemic, it's affecting all the cells in the body. Mm -hmm. So when maybe it hits the bone marrow, the immunity of the patients go low. So we advise the patients, the, the, the hemoglobin, the level of the blood goes low. 
the patient is prone to infections, mm -hmm. the patient is fatigued because of the chemotherapy. You know, when you get the, maybe the red blood cells are, are hit and destroyed. So the, ox the oxygen levels, the, the capacity, it's the red blood cells that pro transport the oxygen. Eh? Mm -hmm. So the capacity to transport the oxygen is diminished. The patient will be fatigued. The patient will be pale. The patient will be having difficulty in breathing at one point. So we, we actually advise the patients to really take very healthy diet. More so, that will boost the immunity. Okay. And actually, that is where we give the 21 days. From one, one cycle of chemo to the next cycle of chemo, so that the body can be able to replenish itself. Oh, so there's usually 21 yeah, days Yeah, there's a 21 days. Sort of rest. You rest. Okay. So that your body will be able to replenish and actually be able to withstand mm -hmm. the next cycle of treatment yeah, yeah. You, you should avoid taking alcohol you should avoid smoking you should actually avoid during that that phase whereby your immunity is a bit so you should avoid going to the to the crowded places mm -hmm. actually you're should prone to infections yeah you're prone to infections and all that you should even limit the number of people who are coming to visit you know not your Kenya is our business and visiting the city is part of what we <laughs> our do. Our business, yes. Kabisa, so actually you should remit the number of people who come to visit you because I'll come with a flu that is not even active in me. I have a, a virus that is not active in me. <coughs> but in, to uh, you it will be very strong. Yeah. Okay. So it, we are a bit cautious about the patient. Most of them they are going through chemotherapy and radiation. We said radiation also. It hits the blood cells. Because we are not really, we cannot be able to shield wholly when you are administering radiation. So at one point, it will be able to reach the, the, the bone marrow, hit the cells, the blood cells, the immunity, the fatigue. So we advise on a lot of rest for the patient, a lot of rehydration, mm -hmm. and a lot of moral support. Okay, yeah. I think moral support is key, but moral we'll get support there. support is key. Yeah, yeah. so um, you've talked about radiation and the new um, equipment that's there in KU. So mm -hmm. let me ask you, what are some of the advancements in, in the palliative care uh, sector? Mm -hmm. And do we have new research in the treatment of cancer that's better? Parative care. Let's start with parative care. Mm. Parative care is a holistic, new, or holistic management of patients, and it's not only for the, it's not only for the cancerous patients. Parative care starts at the point of diagnosis. When I am diagnosed with a chronic illness, that is where the palliative care team comes in. Mm -hmm. And for Kenya, we have, a, we have a strong palliative care, but maybe not widely spread. So it's not reachable maybe for all the patients. But yes, palliative care is available for patients. And I can say maybe it's a bit overwhelmed because, okay. yeah, because, for example, I talk about my own county where I work. Mm -hmm. We only have one palliative care unit. That's Moranga. Yes, that's Moranga. Maybe with one staff, and you can imagine that staff is supposed to be catering for all the patients within Moranga County wow. with chronic illnesses, cancer being part of it. Yeah, it's not just cancer; it's, it's all the chronic diabetic, illnesses. traumas, anything that will make your life destabilized at the point like of diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it needs palliative care. So we are not yet there. We are somewhere. But you're not yet there. Not yet there. And not maybe close to there. Mm. A lot and needs to be done. Still. A lot, a lot, a lot. Palliative care is what caters for the for the pain, the cancerous pain. Are there drugs that are available? Mm -hmm. It's a question I'm asking. It's not a point that I'm putting across. Okay. Do you have access accessibility to those drugs? Are all the patients able to access the drugs when they need the drugs when they need when they need the drugs because mm -hmm. you give me drugs today and yesterday I was in so much pain and I got some other drugs somewhere else you're not really okay. and also the supply how is the supply of the drugs is it all through is it affordable so there's so many other things but yes there's palliative care it mm. is there in facilities 
but still we need to the government let's let me talk to them yeah uh -huh, let me talk, talk to them yeah let me talk to them because we really need to upgrade mm -hmm. and not that the burden of let me talk about cancer is becoming so huge right left and center diagnoses are being made daily we need we need a really strong Operative, uh, system. Yes, operative care system. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. Do we have um, new research in cancer treatments? I think research is there every other day. Even mm. if we take your phone and Google now, there's something that is current <laughs> that I didn't know yesterday. Uh -huh. So yes, there is research. Actually, there is something they are doing on the genetics. Mm -hmm. Like, they're able to get the particular gene from your body that is causing the cancer and they are they're able to hit it like whatever treatment modalities that are coming mm -hmm. are specific to that particular gen gene mm -hmm. so like we say for for colorectal cancer there is gene mutation for RAS mm -hmm. so they're getting the RAS and they're hitting it like particularly that one uh -huh. so yes there is research and it's ongoing I think currently Everything else and everyone else is talking about cancer. Everywhere. Everywhere. Every, everywhere. Mm -hmm. Name it. Maybe, no, not in Kenya, but yes. <laughs> we're not <laughs> but there yet. But <laughs> we're not there yet, but we hope to be there. <laughs> so, but research is ongoing. Whatever is happening in the other, in the advanced world is, is great. The support system is great. The... The, the the treatment mm -hmm. that they are using they are using yeah. more current treatment than us so yes research is ongoing and we're hoping we get a breakthrough to it okay so yeah. we have we we have something to be hopeful about yeah, we have, we have. at the end of the day <laughs> oh, yes, okay great so let's go back to the patient mm -hmm. you know what does the um, uh, diagnosis of cancer do to the patient and to the family you know psychologically how does it affect them and what should be done uh, diagnosis just like any other diagnosis it is do you call it traumatizing do you call it heartbreaking I don't have an actual word to use I can't describe it Mm -hmm. It is shattering. When you sit there and you, you have the, the results and you're breaking the news to the patient, I think you can see the patient disintegrate holistically, mm -hmm. sink deep, lost, confused, name it. So it is a hit. It's a hit on the emotional part of it. And the worst part is actually the journey from diagnosis to the mm -hmm. treatment and management journey. Yeah. It is psychologically draining. Draining. Emotionally draining. Financially draining. Let's not even talk about the financial part of it. Mm. It is terrible. It is actually, I don't have the right words. Okay. We, I don't have the right done, words because. You know, it is there. Yeah, it's a, it's a very hard it moment is for, you, yeah, for you, the patient. You, you're just there with the patients and you don't have the right words even to explain the journey that is ahead. Mm -hmm. You can only but think of what is there. The side effects that come from treatment, the, the number of days in hospitals, the, the days that you're not even able to move your body all you you know you can't do anything for yourself everything the holistic change of a lifestyle it's holistic a change of our lifestyle because everything you've been doing you've been doing everything for yourself then you need somebody to be taking you to the washroom somebody to be assisting you in feeding somebody to be accompanying you to the facilities 
it gets to that point and it uh, it gets mm. bad but there's still hope you know there's like still hope that is why we're here there's that is why hope, hope. Yeah, 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 yeah 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 it can still be, be cured it can still be managed and life can be better. early diagnosis prompt treatment that is yeah. what i advocate for each and every other day and that is why i'm here today mm -hmm. like let us let us let us go for screening so that we can get this cancer tannery stage. Le okay. Take yourself for the checkups. If you have anything that, yeah, Points trust your in anyway. trust your instincts. Let mm. them be wrong, yes. but trust them. Like, yeah, it could be cancer. Let me go get that screening, okay. so that we capture it at an early stage. We start management and treatment at an early stage, and we go into remission. Right. Yeah, we've seen people who have gone to remission and lived so many years after that. So yeah. it's, yeah, there's a lot of hope. Okay, yeah. great. Good to hear that. Yeah. Uh, do we have the support for, for, for this, to give information to the patient once they're diagnosed, um, you know, to tell them that this is, the, this is how the journey will be like, mm -hmm. this is the kind of, you know, um, side effects that you're going to have, mm -hmm. but, it, you know, just mm -hmm. to encourage them and to prepare them psychologically. Yes, yes, yes. We have a team. We have a team that we call the navigation team. Mm -hmm. The navigation team will take you through the diagnosis, it will take you through the management, it will take you through the financial impact, it will assist you if you don't have like insurance, NHIF, whatever it is, it will guide you maybe, advise you on that. It will actually link you to the palliative unit where you get support groups, mm -hmm. yes. It and is, is it yeah. is it there in all hospitals or no, how do how do patients? There. It's not there in all hospitals. Actually, it's not there in most hospitals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get them in maybe hospitals where you have oncology units or cancer centers. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. So we have we have a we have a shortage of staff in the other facilities. Not many people are trained on oncology, on oncology matters. Mm -hmm. So not me, not even many people know how to pass the information. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot, there are a lot of gaps. Mostly in facilities where you don't have cancer units and how many cancer units do you have in Kenya to start there. So the gap is huge. Okay. But for us who are trained, we can navigate you through that. Mm -hmm. yeah. How many cancer units do we have in Kenya now that you've mentioned it? <laughs> How many do you know? <laughs> like, let me start from there. <laughs> I, you know, I know K KU. Yeah. I know Nairobi Hospital. Uh -huh. I How know many people can afford Nairobi Hospital? Like not, go not many. That's yeah, a private yeah, one. So we talk private. about public. We talk about what is accessible to you and me. It's, there are not many. Yeah, we have. Okay, we have some. The we Texas have, Cancer Center. It's private. That's private also. Wow. Uh, the Aga Khan is private. You want us to exhaust the private yeah, ones. There's the on. avenue. <laughs> 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 so when you go to the to Public. the government, we have like the KNH, it's parastatal, KU mm. is parastatal. I think those are the big ones, the main ones. Mm. So we go to, we have one in Nyeri that is not fully fledged because it doesn't have radiation. It just does chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. We go to Nakuru. Nakuru is they have a nice cancer center. They actually have the radiation. Okay. We go to Garissa. We have one. Uh -huh. We go to MTRH. And yeah, Eldolet. Yeah, those are the main ones. Maybe the others that are upcoming, like not for repriced. When I say for repriced, like they have both radiation and chemotherapy. chemotherapy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So a lot still needs to be done. The government a still needs a to do a lot, a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot, actually a what, lot. What about the insurance? Uh, and now we're moving to shift, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> how, how is that coming in to help? Uh, the insurance, let's talk of what we have now. Because mm -hmm. we, we still have the backs and forth of Yeah. So for the NHIF, it caters for part of it. Go for something we call brachytherapy. This is radiation, internal radiation for, for cervical cancer. Per session, it's around 45,000. NHIF will just cater for two of them. You need three sessions. Wow, for 45,000 you need Go to for get radiation, it. you get a point and the patient has repeated the, the insurance. So the financial burden is there. I don't know for the other insurances. 
because maybe I haven't worked with them so much. Yeah? But I know not most of the insurances cater for cancer. Yeah. And if they do, they have a seal. Mm -hmm. Like this is the maximum you can use. Okay. How, may, how much do you use for chemotherapy? Mm -hmm. A dime. A dime. You just like go for three, four sessions and you're done. What else is needed apart from chemotherapy? You have, the, you have to do some lab works. You have to do some imaging. Mm. So, and there's it's okay. Mm. Also, so there's a, there's a huge gap. Okay. There's a huge gap, actually. Yeah. What would you say is the biggest burden of cancer, even as we come to a close on this conversation, mm -hmm. uh, from everything that you've said, the gaps that are there, you know, the, mm -hmm. to the patient, to um, in the government, what needs to be done. What would you say, looking at it holistically, what would you say is the biggest burden of cancer? The biggest burden will be the number of incidences that are being diagnosed, or the number of new cases that are being diagnosed on daily basis, mm -hmm. and they're being pushed to a system that is already not operational, or a system that is already strained. Personally, at our place, we refer all the patients to KNH from Moranga, mm -hmm. the whole of the county. Nyeri County radiation to Moranga, to, to KNH. So the, already the system is constrained, yeah. and still their diagnosis is right shift and center. The diagnoses are so high, the incidence rates are so high. So there's a burden on the health system. Mm -hmm. There's a burden on the health system. I keep on saying, I wish the government would put on so much resources, like they did for the HIV. There was a time HIV was that monster in the house. Yes, yes. Right now, we, we rarely talk about HIV. Partners have come. That we are, you are able to even reach the patients while at home. The patients can be able to access medicine or medications or services for free from the comprehensive care unit care centers mm -hmm. i think that is where we should turn so that we can be able maybe to ease the burden to be able to to curb the the cases be able to reach out to as many people let the people know that there is there is, there is hope so advocacy, mm -hmm. partnership, let everybody, let all the stakeholders come on board because the system is trained with cancer. Leave alone the other comorbidities that come with cancer. Mm -hmm. Leave alone that you come with a lesion and the lesion will turn out to, to be cancerous at one point, but it was just a, a wound from nowhere. Mm -hmm. So the system, the burden is so huge. The gap in the medical field how many people are trained how many people have the knowledge so it is an all round it's all round okay. it's all round so in terms of the resources we've talked about the emotional support for the patients what are we doing for the patients that are at home just doing the palliative there's nothing all the patients who have trans transited from from palliative to hospice like this is where we, we, we come to an end with treatment, so we now get into hospice. What is a hospice? Oh, we didn't talk about hospice. Yes. <laughs> okay, hospice is just a support system for patients after everything that is medical has reached its limits. Uh, limits. Mm -hmm. So the only other thing we do is maybe support the patient, we manage the pain, we rehydrate, nutrition, emotional support. Like there's nothing else medically that can be done for that. We've mm -hmm. given everything that is available. We've exhausted medical resources or medical modalities of treatment, and there's nothing else that can be done for the for that patient. And most of the patients that get into hospice, maybe they are at the end of life. So there's the end of life support okay. for the families, for the patient. At this point, this way you're prepared. Can you make a will? If you didn't meditate the palliative part of it, okay. yeah. If you want to reconcile with your God, because now this is end of life. This is <laughs> end of life. So mm -hmm. that is all about hospice. So how many hospice units do we have? Mm -hmm. I know a few. In our place, we don't have a whole county. We don't have so how many other counties? How many other don't counties? Have? Lack a yeah. 
And by the end of the day, when the patients, when the main cancer centers are done with the patients, where do they send them back? To the community. We are the community. Mm -hmm. So they should be able to link the patient to a hospice in a certain mm -hmm. unit or in a, in a certain facility so that they can be able to continue with the care of the patient until the end of life. Okay. So we talk about cancer in the burden, it's huge. It's huge. And huge. what message then would you convey to the public um, finally, as you conclude, on how to you know, manage this burden mm -hmm. uh, that cancer brings, the burden of cancer mm -hmm. uh, as a society? Mm -hmm. You've spoken to the government, you've spoken to the patients, mm -hmm. now to the society, the public. Mm -hmm. How do we then manage this burden of cancer? Mm -hmm. We say that cancer is curable, but only, unfortunately, it comes with a but. It's only curable if you get it, or you are able to diagnose it at a very early stage. Yeah. So, to the public, let's embrace the screening. Yes, let's embrace the change of lifestyle. Most of, the, most of the cancers, when you talk about the risk factors, lifestyle comes as one of the hugest, it plays the biggest part in contribution to, to the cancer. When we talk about lifestyle, we're talking about the way you manage your weight, what you eat, your diet, alcohol, you don't, you don't, you need to carb on alcohol, you need to carb on smoking, and when I talk about smoking, it's Anything that is smokable, shisha, tobacco, bangi, anything. Anything. Smokable. Anything that is smokable. <laughs> you, you think of it and I, th I see somebody smoking actually out there and I'm looking at them and I'm like, oh, that is esophageal cancer that is awaiting there in mm -hmm. the next five, ten years. Okay. I see somebody drunk and walking, staggering, and I'm like, oh, I can see gastric cancer. I can see whatever other cancers that is associated with that. So right. it's a personal initiative. Change your lifestyle. Embrace what what is recommended medically. It may not really work a hundred percent, but it will play it will play a big role. Go for screening. There are cancers that you can get screened for cervical cancer. Screening in all facilities are free. Breast cancer screening it's free. Mm -hmm. Prostate cancer screening, and also have that other instinct of telling you it could be cancer. So when you go to the facility, uh, talk to the doctor and like, <laughs> and could it be? <laughs> you know, you trigger, you trigger that other person to be yeah. like, yeah, maybe, maybe we, maybe, should, you know, check it. we should do this test mm. to confirm. So let, have, let us have that suspicion index very high for not only the medical part of us, even us as individuals. <laughs> so when you see that patient who comes with bleeding and you're thinking of hormonal imbalance, you as a patient, you can, could it also be? It was here last month. It wasn't here last month, but this month. You don't yeah. wait for it to for next month. No, just go to the facility and get screened. Mm. So early diagnosis, prompt treatment, that is what I'm advocating for. Mm. Preventive measures. So we've talked about lifestyle. We've talked about vaccination for our young girls. That's we are the for HPV. HPV, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, Wonderful. Thank you so much you. <laughs> Rose, <laughs> for the amazing insights. Where can people get you on your socials? And with this, you can even look directly to the camera okay. if you want to say any other thing <laughs> that you might have missed out. Okay. So, mm. personally, I love advocating for preventive. My advocacy on cancer is all about preventive measures. Go to my social media FB. I'm not so vocal on social media, but I have one, not very active, <laughs> but I try once in a while. Uh -huh. Rose, the oncology nurse. You'll get some information about cancer there. And by the end of it all, to Jipende, mm -hmm. go for screening, change your lifestyle. And if you know somebody in your family who has cancer, let, let us support them. Let us, let us be there for them. Mm -hmm. It is all about us as a family, us as a community, us as a society, so that we can be able to win. 
this yeah. battle of cancer together together as awesome. well. yes <laughs> yeah. indeed uh, yeah. thank you very much once again so that has been our oncology in Astros, Wanjiro, and I know you've loved her from how she explains it, and she has such a passion to educate and uh, just create the awareness out there on cancer and prevention, as she has said. What have you taken from this discussion? Talk to us, tell us something. You can get us on social media. Uh, get me on my page at Stephanie Getta across all social media handles. But if you have a story that you want to share or anything, then go to our email at myhealthbeatke at gmail.com. So we'll meet you next time, same time, same place. Until then, let's keep it locked at myhealthbeat. Adios. <laughs>